Welcome to chapter 11. In this series of videos, we are going to delve deep into the properties of stock options. And to do this, we're going to need some notation. And I know you guys hate all that notation, but uh, we need a way of keeping this straight and a way of communicating thoughts without using so many words. So, S sub naught is the current stock price. We will use that to represent the current stock price of whatever day it happens to be or wherever we are in time. S naught will be what the stock price is right now. K, as we've seen, is the strike price on the option. And that will remain uh, as K. T, capital T, will represent time to expiration and T will always be expressed as a decimal. Uh, so 1.0 represents one year. 2.0 represents two years. 0.5 represents six months. So S sub T is the stock price at expiration. If S naught is the current stock price, T is the time to expiration. S sub T is the stock price at expiration. Here's a new one, sigma, volatility. We're going to see that volatility is one of the uh, most important variables for a trader of options to understand. Uh, there are lots of ways to profit from volatility, and if you don't understand volatility, lots of ways to lose from it. So, pictorially, here's what it looks like. Let's say a stock price moves like this. We would say that that has low volatility, but if it moves like this, there we go, some nice highs and lows. We would say that has high volatility. So there's a nice pictorial representation of volatility. And we'll return to volatility later. Uh, in It's one of my favorite variables when it comes to uh, stock options. Little r, the risk-free rate. We see this everywhere, don't we? And one of the questions uh, that seems to pop up uh, uh, quite often is, why do we use the risk-free rate? Why don't we use another interest rate? Well, it's because we use the risk-free rate when we price things because what we want to do is eliminate arbitrage opportunities. And the risk-free rate tells us where the bounds are for arbitrage. And then finally, we have dividends. And you may be saying, wait a minute, these are stock options. Stock options aren't adjusted for dividends. And you're right. Stock options are not adjusted for dividends. But they are dividend sensitive in their pricing. So if a stock goes X dividend, we expect the price of the stock to drop by the price of the dividend. But on the day the stock goes X dividend, the options don't drop by the amount of the dividend. And that's what we mean when we say option prices are not adjusted for dividends. They're not adjusted for dividends, but they are dividend sensitive in their pricing so that the stream of dividends is already priced into the option so that the option is not then adjusted for dividends. It doesn't mean that, that options ignore dividends. They're just not adjusted for dividends. And that's a, sort of a big misnomer in the marketplace. A lot of rookie traders in options believe that, oh, we can ignore dividends. No, you cannot. A capital C with either an A or an E will represent the call value for American or European options. And a capital P with a sub uh, A or E for American or European will represent the put value. Now, what we want to do at this point, just to have clear in our head, is we want to see what happens to the call value and the put value of options as we change only one variable and leave the others the same. So let's have a look at the effect on the call and the put for the European options and the call and the put for the American options. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to change only one variable at a time. We'll start with the uh, current stock price. Then we'll just change the strike price while everything else stays the same. We'll change the uh, variable T, volatility, the risk-free rate, and dividends. And we're going to look at, at what happens to the value of the calls and puts as each of these increase. Okay, We're looking at increasing each of these and its effect on the value of the options. So let's start with the effect of a rising stock price on the value of the calls and the puts. Keep in mind, I'm going to repeat this several times, that 
we are looking at the effect of an increase of the stock price while everything else stays the same. So in other words, volatility is not increasing, the interest rate is stable, uh, time to expiration is not increasing. We're just looking at if the stock price increases, what would be the effect on the value of the options? And we're going to do this for each one. So if, if everything else stays the same and the stock price increases, it's easy to see that the value of the calls will also increase because the strike price is staying constant. So as the stock price goes up, the calls become more valuable. As the calls become more valuable, the puts become less valuable. So I think that's fairly straightforward on this one. Now let's look at the strike price changing. In other words, everything stays the same, but instead of you buying, a, let's say, a $50 call, you decide you want to buy a $55 call, or a 60 or a 65 so that the higher you go on the call price, what would we expect to see? We would expect to see the call prices drop because as you're moving further and further out of the money, uh, the price would drop. But if it's a put and the stock price stays the same and the strike price increases, so if the stock price is 50 and you decide not to buy a $50 put, but a $60 put, or a $70 put, or an $80 put, well, it becomes more and more and more in the money, so the put value would increase. So I think that's fairly straightforward at this point, and the next one's pretty straightforward as well. It's not until we get to the uh, volatility, uh, the interest rate, and the dividend where, it, where I need you to stay with me as best you can. So let's look at time to expiration. As there is more time to expiration, there is more time for the stock price to move. So more time has value. So if it has value, it has value for all options, not just calls or puts. It has value for all options. So what we would expect to see in a situation like that is an increase in price across the board, across all options, because it has value for all, not just one. So that's what we would expect on, uh, on time. Now, I do want to make a point uh, of, of uh, dealing with the European options here. Um, I said that all of them would increase, and generally they do. However, European options only exercise on expiration. American options exercise any time. So the effect here is clear. The effect here is not so clear. And let me try to give you an example of what I mean. And when we get to dividends, you'll understand this better. But let's say that we are looking at a European option. We're looking at a 30-day and a 60-day European option. And let's say the 30-day option is priced at $2. We would expect that the 60-day option should be priced greater than $2 and it probably is. It's probably priced at three. All other things constant. All other things constant. But if there is a dividend expected somewhere in here, and remember, the option price is not adjusted for dividends. When the dividend occurs, the option price does not go X dividend. But the pricing of an option is dividend sensitive. In other words, the dividend is already priced into the option. So let's say that we're expecting a dividend here of $2. It could be the fact that the $30 call is $2, but the $60 call might only be $1.25 because it accounts for the fact that a dividend is going to occur after this date but before this date. Since these can only be exercised on expiration, there is no risk of pricing the dividend in now because it can only occur on expiration. So the other side of this is we're not sure. For the European call and put, we can't say for sure that the price will increase. The price may decrease if there is a dividend expected between dividend dates. And that's, that's one of the uh, nice things about European options is because they can only be exercised on the final date, the pricing of them becomes very straightforward. With the American one, well, they can be exercised at any time. So do we price this dividend into this event? If it can be exercised before the fact, that becomes a bit of an issue and a bit of a problem uh, with the American options, as we'll see later on. But anyways, I think, I think we understand that. As time increases, it's more valuable 
and, and we're willing to pay more. The volatility of the stock. Well, as we can see from the example I gave here, we have low volatility and high volatility. So what would you naturally expect to happen to the price of options? And again, uh, if volatility increases, the price of all options increase. All option prices increase. Because with low volatility, uh, getting higher or getting lower is not very probable given its track record. But with a high volatility stock, there's a high probability that it'll increase in price and hit the strike. And there's a high probability that it can decrease in price and hit the strike. So you will pay more in volatile environments. Now that becomes very important. A lot of uh, um, uh, traders who are new to options don't like volatility. They don't like it because it's unpredictable. And it is unpredictable. But there is an excellent, there are excellent, excellent trades in volatility when you know how to trade volatility and options are probably the single best tool for trading volatility we're going to get to some good strategies some good volatility strategies but once you understand how to trade volatility you'll start to realize that volatility is your friend not your enemy it's your friend if you're a linear trader by linear i mean you're buying the stock yeah volatility is a terrible thing it's actually quite terrible unless you're combining it into a portfolio of other other items and the portfolio is less volatile but on its own a volatile stock well that can be a headache right let's move on let's have a look at the uh, at the risk free rate what happens to the price of a stock with uh, when the interest rates uh, increase this one is not so straightforward to figure out what we have to keep in mind is everything else stays the same so when I put uh, some uh, um, symbols down here, at first glance, you may say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Well, no, I'm not. When I put the symbol down, I want you to understand that this symbol looks like this. If everything stays the same, so if, the, if there's a rise in the risk-free rate, but the stock price does not move, it stays the same, that'll, this will be the effect. So... As the interest rates rise, it has the effect of making calls more valuable and making puts less valuable. <clears throat> now, I can already hear people out there. Yes, I can. I can because because when I first went through options and learned this, it I struggled with this for a while, saying you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. This is the problem with academics teaching this stuff. They don't understand how it works in the real world. Well, yes, we do. Let me explain this very, very... Uh, I'm, I'm going to try my best with the logic because this, if you don't get this, it, it really starts to break... The logic really starts to break down for you when we get to more advanced topics. So let me, let me uh, um, give it to you like this. When interest rates rise, we naturally see the price of stocks drop in the marketplace. We naturally see that. And when the price of stocks drop... As we've seen, if the stock, if the price increases, the calls become more valuable. But if the price of the stock drops, the calls would be less valuable. So if raising the interest rate lowers the stock price, shouldn't the call become a negative sign? Shouldn't we have a negative sign over here and a positive sign on the puts? Yes, you should. But, as I said several times, we're looking at the effect of changing one variable, and in this case, the risk-free rate, while everything else stays the same. For this call to have a negative sign when the interest rates go up, what we're implicitly saying is we're also changing the stock price at the same time. So now two things are changing. Yes, in the real world, everything changes at the same time, and we will get to that. But to get you into the real world with an intuitive understanding of what's going on, I need to keep you here in this safe environment first so that you understand what happens when only one thing changes. Now, here's the rationale. <clears throat> As the risk-free rate goes up, if the stock price does not drop, in other words, if it stays constant, this is the marketplace telling you something. This is what happens. The risk-free rate goes up. 
the net present value of all future cash flows shrinks. So the stock price should shrink with it. But if it doesn't, and it holds its ground, if it does not change, that means that investors are saying that the prospects for future growth, that's why interest rates go up, because you have a heating, your economy is heating up, so if the interest rates go up, investors are saying the prospects of future growth for this stock outweigh the drop in the net present value of the stock so that you have a, a bullish bias building up around a stock price that does not drop when interest rates rise. <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it? So you have to use your logic and you have to, you have to figure it out. Sometimes the move is two, three, four moves ahead. You know, if you're playing chess or pool, you understand that you're playing two, three, four moves ahead. Well, as the risk-free rate increases and the stock price stays the same, that means that the expectation for future, for future earnings, for a future return on the stock, outweigh the drop in net present value of, of earnings, um, dividends discounted at a higher rate which would then push upward pressure on the call. And if you have an inherently bullish bias building up that offsets the rise in the rate, it should lower the price of the put. Again, in the real world, usually interest rates rise, stock prices drop to reflect that fact, usually. But here we're holding all things constant. So, good. <clears throat> Let's go to the dividend. And remember what I said here, option prices are not adjusted for dividends. Stock prices are. So if a stock goes X dividend today, the price of the stock will open up, will just simply be adjusted downwards by the value of the dividend. It'll just open at that new price lower, and that's it. But an option price will not be adjusted for the dividend. So when a stock goes X dividend, there is no such thing for the options. They will not go X dividend. So they do not respond to dividends, but they are dividend sensitive when we originally price the option. And that's a big, uh, uh, a big confusion for students of options is they assume that because dividend prices are not, uh, uh, sorry, option prices are not adjusted for dividends, that option prices don't care about dividends. That's not true. They do, but it's already in the price, as I showed up here on the European option. So if dividends are expected to increase, they're expected to increase, it will put downward pressure, the, the value of the calls will drop, the value of the puts will increase. So that when you're buying a put and you're seeing that the value of the put is increasing as dividends are increasing, you must understand that that's because when the stock goes X dividend, it drops, the put, the option on the put, will reflect the fact that it will drop so that when the dividend is paid and the stock price goes X dividend, this will not go X dividend because the dividend is in the price already. I need you to, to intuitively understand how this, this chart right here. This chart is very important going forward because everything builds from this. So if you don't understand this, listen to this video again so that you understand every single variable. Maybe you understand five of them, but not one, and you say, well, I'll push on anyways. No, I want you to sit and think about it. The, the work you do now will pay off down the road with less, uh, less stress in trying to figure out, no, 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 that doesn't make sense, because options, because they're derivatives, they can be tricky because your thinking is one and sometimes two steps removed from an event. You have to think in terms of a derivative and a derivative of a derivative. So try and, 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 and not push forward until you really get this.